This video is about the basics of data reversing. It will cover three questions like how to tell if a file is compressed or encrypted or not. Second part is about basic types like integers and floats. And the third part is how to see a different kind of game data like textures, matrices, and geometry. So let's start from compressions encryptions. There is no universal way to tell if it's compressed or not, if it's encrypted or not, but there are a few basic things we can know about it. So if you open a usual game file like this, twisted metal something, we see at least some zeros, or maybe many zeros, some repeating bytes, some patterns, all across the file, and this tells that this file is not encrypted and not compressed, at least in most of its part. But if we open the file and we see nothing interesting, no zeros, nothing repeats, just a set of random bytes from start to end, this will mean that this is probably all encrypted, like this file. But at the same time, in 1% of such cases, it can be just an internal stream of video or audio, which will look almost exactly the same, uh, just a set of random bytes from the first look. Anyway, if you see an encrypted file, you can't do anything with it in hex. To decrypt it, you have to debug or disassemble the executable and go from that. There is no way you can guess anything uh, in encrypted files nowadays. Only if encryption is very simple, um, then it's possible to do something with it, but it's not the case in most modern games. So let's now see some compressed files. Uh, you know, um, in old times, everybody used their own compressions. There were hundreds of them. Uh, everybody who made games used something of their own. But nowadays, people got lazy, and everybody's using Woodle or Zlib or something. Uh, very few types. So. If you open a file and you see some numbers which are probably compressed and decompressed sizes, and then you see 8C06, this is 99% possibility that this is Woodle compressed block from here to somewhere. And if you search for this, you will see it repeats later. These are next blocks of Woodle compression and a few zeros. It's it's not hundred percent that it's Woodle, but like very possible. And another example is Zlib which also has some magic numbers, some zeros, and then 78DA, which is, uh, again, a 99% sign that this is a Zlib compressed block. And there must be, or maybe, uh, many blocks in this file. And another example is RPF file, which is also encrypted but it has lots of zeros in the beginning, some magic word, some numbers which are probably number of key used to encrypt, and then after some time all the bytes looks like random bytes. This is also a usual case when only a few regions are encrypted and 
some other data is not encrypted or just zeros. And now let's proceed with basic types. Two basic types used everywhere are floating points and integers. Integers can be 1 byte, 2 byte, 4 or 8 bytes. That's all the basic types actually. Uh, there are also strings, but these do not require any explanation, I think. So let's first talk about floating points. If you see something like this in your file, this is most probably an array of floating point numbers. You can see that each four bytes you see a number which starts uh, either from 3E3F, 3D something, or BEBF, BD something. This is because floating points can hold from very small to very big numbers, but most numbers in games are in a very small range, like in matrices they are from minus 1 to plus 1, which is the case here. So this 3F80 is 1, these are zeros, these numbers are something in between, like 3E something is like dot 7 or dot 9 positive numbers uh, b e b f are small negative numbers and because of this you can always usually you can always visually detect floating point numbers like matrices or even if uh, like see this one like lots of zeros 1 1 and 1 diagonal. It's uh, a zero rotation matrix with some translation in uh, line 4, for example. So these are probably matrices. 99% sure these are matrices. Now let's go to integers. So uh, most usual example of of uh, two byte integer is a face buffer we've seen before, like this one. So if you look at it, you see a repeating two byte pattern, one something, then two something, three, and so on. So it's very easily detected by just looking at it, scrolling up and down. Ah, and these are floating points, as I said before, when floating point number is bigger than 1, it's like um, 10, 100, or 1000, it will look like 40 something, 42, 45, if it's positive, and C4, C5, C6, if it's negative. So this is an array of big floating points numbers. Again, not that big. It's usually no more than a thousand. So again, easily detected. Each four bytes. Uh, an example of four byte integer is an offset inside of a file. So in the very beginning, we can see uh, a set of such numbers. Uh, you can notice they all aligned to four bytes, like some zeros and then number increase. So these are most probably offsets inside of this file and they increase. Actually there is no way to tell for sure if they are 4 bytes, but if you, if you see uh, many of them, many files, many structures, you can usually tell it. But even if you've seen a lot, it can always be that, that this table is just a, a table of two parts, like two bytes first, which tells you like a material one and then some offset, like material two, 
and then some offset. So you can never tell just for from looking at the number. Uh, you need to analyze the whole file and one by one you know its parts, like what is this, and then you suddenly understand that this is a number of these offsets and this will confirm that they are 4 byte length and so on. So this FFFF, it can be either 2 bytes here or even if if it's shifted, like you can shift it here and it can be this number or something else. This 6 can be just 1 byte or it can be 8 byte length uh, like 64 bit subset. Sometimes when you reverse the file you can you have to move left and right to understand uh, what's the next number from here. So for example uh, the hardest part is usually when numbers are mixed like one byte 2 byte, 4 bytes and such. So for this last example let's take a submesh table. And it was somewhere around here. Yeah. Uh, submesh tables. We don't know what is inside of them. We can only guess that this one is probably an offset because it starts from zero. It's no bigger than the size of a file because the size of a file is this and this is this can be either 4 byte integer or 2 2 byte integers like for example here this d is one number this 4 is another one and this can be anything 4 bytes 2 bytes or it can be an offset starting from here for 4 bytes. You can never tell uh, before you understand the other parts. There are even uh, floating points here. If you look at this, remember this 40 something, it's actually a positive floating point number and there are two more on the left of it. And I know these are x, y, and z coordinates of this submesh inside of a map or inside of a, the whole model. Now let's go to the last part of this tutorial, game data. We've already seen the phase buffer which is filled by two byte integers and we've seen matrices which are an array of floating points and uh, the only thing that's left is like a geometry and textures yeah textures most modern games use dds textures and if you've seen a lot of them uh, once you see something like this in your file, you're almost sure that this is a texture. This AAAA, this 5555, and even this 49922449, it's always the same in DXT5 textures. You will see a lot of such bytes once you've seen them. They are either 16 bytes or 8 bytes for DXT1, 8 bytes. Texture patterns are very distinguishable. Like this one is probably all black DXT5 texture. And this between, it must be uh, some geometry data. Or maybe just some colors and UVs. So lastly, if you see something like this, when you scroll it up and down, you see lots of numbers changing in the same pattern. 
this will most probably be a vertex buffer of some kind. It usually holds everything in one place, like coordinates, normal tangents, colors, and UVs in it. Like this one is probably small. Yeah. So uh, it's even aligned to 16 bytes, so easily to see that this is probably colors or normals or tangents because normals are usually three bytes and colors two and this is probably a uv one uv and this is a second uv pair which is zero or maybe it's color which is black we don't know uh, you can detect uvs because they are usually how floats and this is almost the same as floats but they are two bytes and again they start from 30 something uh, in this example they also start from two something and this is all basics you should know to start reversing data thank you for watching